Welcome back, 742. Right now, Pacific Science Center's Tropical Butterfly House showcasing more than a thousand butterflies from South and Central America, Africa, and Asia. And this morning, we're bringing you an inside look at what it takes to feed all of these creatures. Fox 13's Abby Acone is there for us now. Hi, Abby. Good morning. It's uh, good to have you here. Explain this for us. <laughs> Yeah, this is a really exciting place. I'm having the time of my life out here. This is a magical place, the Tropical Butterfly House exhibit here at Pacific Science Center. Great opportunity for families and kids, especially going into the summer season, to come and explore and appreciate the 50 different butterfly species that are here. To talk in depth about this, I want to bring in Rachel Nelson, Animal Care Coordinator here. Rachel, good morning. Hi, good morning. All right, so we're talking about what it takes to feed these butterflies. But first, let's start off with this metamorphosis window. I'm just glued. Tell me about the process here. You know, it's incredible. We get a couple hundred new chrysalises every single week. Um, and we get both chrysalises, which is the butterflies, and cocoons for our moths. And they will hang in this window until they emerge as a butterfly. And then we can release them into the exhibit. I love that some of the chrysalises look like leaves. They're blending into the environment. They do, to prevent, uh, prevent um, predators from being able to get them. Okay, so how long are these guys in their chrysalises and cocoons? You know, it really depends on the species and the individual butterfly themselves. It can be anywhere from a week to a couple months, actually. And you were telling me that when they first come out sometimes, they're all juicy and floppy, right? And so when they hang upside down, it helps to drain the liquid, is that right? Yes, essentially. So when they come out of their chrysalis, their wings are really, really soft and pliable. And as they hang upside down, they're pumping liquid through their veins, and that helps stiffen their wings so they can fly. Okay, so question about the cocoons. You're saying that some of these guys have been in here for months. Months, right? Yes, so they can go into diapause, which is essentially where they pause their production or their development until they feel like they're ready to come out into the world. And you're saying that you get to bring some of them out here into the environment every single day? Yes, so whoever emerges from the previous night um, gets to come into the exhibit. We do releases twice a day, both right when we open and right before close. Rachel, this is really fun. Let's talk about food. What does it take Absolutely. to feed these majestic creatures? You know, so we have a lot of butterflies who rely on fruit, or sorry, flowers from the trees, but we also have quite a few that rely on fruit here. Since we are um, featuring tropical species, a lot of them actually rely on fruit juice. So they will um, eat the, the nectar, sorry, the fruit juice from rotten fruit as it falls to the ground um, in the tropical forests. Okay, and how does this fuel their little their, their, their little selves? <laughs> so there's a lot of sugar in this fruit um, as it rots especially and gets even more fermented. It gets juicier, um, meaning they have more opportunity to eat from it. So here at the Science Center, we actually just provide fruit twice a week. And we do let it get a little gross because they like it a little bit more to have that nice um, yeah. juiciness. Okay, so you know, let's bring some of these uh, pieces of fruit Absolutely. over to this section. These guys are nibbling on it. And uh, so, okay, local butterflies here in the Seattle area, they eat right from flowers. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they are not going to rely on fruit. <laughs> you don't have to put fruit in your yard for them. <laughs> and why are these pollinators so important to help give way to like a thriving garden? You know, they're really crucial to um, pollinating a lot of flowers. There are some flowers that only exclusively are pollinated by butterflies. But they're also um, a really incredible food source for a lot of animals in the environment. You can set that right on each of those, or on the sunflower there. Lovely. Oh, look at they how peaceful and so serene they are. They entranced by their food. And it seems like Perfect. these butterflies are not intimidated by humans. Tell me more. No, so our butterflies here especially see a lot of people, um, but butterflies generally don't have great eyesight. They see a lot, um, but they don't see very specific things. So if you're moving slowly and calmly, <laughs> they usually are really friendly. Rachel, this has been really fun to explore and learn. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having yeah, me. This has been great. Okay, reporting to Pacific Science Center, Abby Cody, Fox 13 News. That it's so beautiful and peaceful, Abby. Oh my gosh, what a cool, yeah. a cool treat this morning. <laughs> Thank you.